All right, welcome back everyone to King Win Pro League 2015 with me, Monk. We're just done casting ourselves, playing a you know, series of matches with, uh, with you know, auto-completed decks in the Hearthstone. So we're going to be casting Trump versus Hyde, but before we move on to that, I want to talk to you again about the caster search that King Win is, uh, this is an ongoing King Win thing. <clears throat> Holy hell. All right, so we're looking for casters. In a nutshell, if you want to become a caster for, you know, Kingwin Pro League, send your VOD of yourself casting to esports at kingwin.net for a chance to maybe get invited in their studios for a cast-off. And also, last reminder, before we move on to the actual matches, um, Kingwin Pro, uh, the charity event, will be ongoing this weekend, starting tomorrow. We'll have Friday, Saturday, um, and possibly Sunday with 16 players. It's going to be a fresh roster, completely fresh for the Easter edition of this King Win charity event. So that should be a nice thing, especially with the new new cars that are coming out today with the opening of the third wing of Black Rock Mountain. Hopefully we'll see some new decks. Yeah, and not only that, if you really want to support King Win for putting on all these matches, these uh, King Win Pro League every week, two uh, two days every week, plus all these King Win 4 charity matches, then you can uh, use the code KPL to buy games from Kingwin and you get an 8% discount. 8%, that's value. Um, yeah. So, that being said, again, I keep saying that being said, don't I? I say that a lot. I, I, I just say that a lot. It's like, it's huge draw. It's, uh, that's my, my, that's my huge draw. Um, in general, when I cast, I just keep saying the same, uh, same thing. So, Trump versus Hype. Do we have the classes for the players? I don't think we do because I would generally venture to say that Trump is a, you know, as you said earlier, kind of akin to Strive Crow in that he plays the safe plays and the safe classes, but he has diversified his lineups a lot. Yep. Um, I do want to focus more on Hyped first for this series. Okay, go ahead. Hyped is a player that he pretty much is a very predictable player, unfortunately, and he knows that it's one of his weaknesses. He pretty much only plays Druid, Mage, and Rogue in every single um, to every single tournament. In the past, like, three or four tournaments, he's brought the same exact lineup of Druid, Mage, and Rogue. And because of that, it's very predictable in that you can pretty much target one of those three classes in order to win a, a series. In their last series in the Xfinity tournament, Trump actually did exactly that. He brought three decks that were good against Rogue. He brought a Druid that was teched out against Rogue. He brought a Warrior, and he brought a Face Hunter. Um, okay, again. yeah, Face so Hunter he basically, is just... He basically knew, like, these three classes, they would be good against Rogue, so he could basically 3-0 Rogue. Yeah, and, and they, very... they don't even have to surrender too much of their consistency either, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, they're all, like, Face Hunter, Druid, and Warrior. They're all good classes anyway. So against the rest of the field, they're going to be good. But against Hyped especially, they're going to be like especially good because they all have advantages against the class that you know Hyped is going to play. So I would actually think that Hyped as a player, because he's not as uh, he's not as diversified, he's always playing the same classes, he would struggle in a, t in a league such as this. But in reality, Hyped is actually 4-2. So even with this like quote-unquote disadvantage, Hyped is doing very well here. Yeah, he's got he's got a pretty good score, but then again, you know, this is oddly enough like we're nearing the end of the, the league, you know, the first season of the league. With this is week seven, we're gonna have nine weeks of qualifiers before the playoffs. So there's really only two more weeks to go. With in theory, only more two more matches per player. So we're nearing the very end, and these matches matter a lot because we talked about that earlier. But all the players have a very similar score. Hyped is four two, but. No, Caldi is now, I think, 4-3. Dog is 4-3. So if Hype loses a game to Trump here, he's going to be 4-3 as well, you know, competing with Caldi and Dog. And he's going to have a lower tiebreaker than Caldi unless he wins against uh, against Trump twice before losing. So a lot of the scores come in as uh, very impactful. Sometimes just one win will make a huge difference. And it's especially true in this case because Trump and, Trump and Hype are respectively second and third in their group. So whoever wins this is going to take a huge lead in general like they won't have to face off against each other once more yeah not only do they get a point but they take a point away from one of their main competitors basically exactly uh, wh whoever wins this match will go up to like he'll basically secure first and second place uh first or second place at least for the next uh week or two and whoever loses he drops out to about fifth place so it's we're talking about this is a match pretty much for a playoff spot at this point 
Yeah, this is a, for Trump and hype. This is definitely that like a, a, a spot in the and the, the best part is like if you finish, you know, second and third, you get directly to the quarterfinals. But first player in each group is going to move on to the semifinals directly without having to go through the quarterfinals. So if they can get themselves that first spot that Life Coach and Strive Core are currently holding, that's even better. So they're going to struggle to get there, but it's definitely possible that one of them does get it. Yeah, for Trump especially, I think like if a player like Trump, everyone's uh, a lot of people are criticizing him for his skill. I yeah. do think he's a very good player because he's like second in the league, and for but for a player like Trump to get first in his group in this league, it, it sends out a really strong statement that he actually is like one of the absolute absolute best players in the world. Yeah, he's not just a streamer in effect. So. That being said, uh, with the lineups, we have Hunter, Mage, Warrior for Trump, and as you said, Druid, Mage, and Rogue for Hyped. Very predictable. Yeah. This is the exact same lineup you predicted. So Hunter, Mage, Warrior for Trump, which uh, leads me to believe that may be a very targeted, you know, anti-Rogue lineup. Yeah, the only, uh, I, I guess Warrior and Hunter are very good against Rogue, but yeah. the Mage, uh, I'm not too sure. Like, if it's Mech Mage, I would say that's like, Maybe slightly favored for the mech mage, not but not anything more than like 4, 55, 45. And if it's freeze mage, that's also possible. But then again, we haven't seen Trump play a lot of freeze mage lately. Um, and even though hyped always plays druid mage and rogue, at least he divers diversifies his mage sometimes. Sometimes he'll play mech mage, and sometimes he'll play freeze mage. So that's always a possibility as well. Yeah, and there's there's a few variants you can make on Druid as well, but the core of it seems to be like 27 stuck cards. If you're playing fast, uh, you can tweak it to be ramp Druid, but that's pretty much gone out of the meta game. Although with the rise of something like Hunter, that is not you know unheard of. It's not even that terrible, and it also puts up so many taunts that sometimes rogues have problems with it. Yeah, like. Uh... Gara has been using Ramp Druid lately. He's been he's brought it to KPL before, right? And he I yeah he last I, to, this week as well. Yeah, he, I believe he brought it to C Story Cup as well. So like, um, he's his logic is basically that a lot of aggressive decks like the Face Hunter and especially the Zoo have been coming up. So Ramp Druid is actually positioned to be a fairly good, uh, fairly good deck these days. Yeah, I'm not sure that uh, you know Hype would play it, but he is you know team member with. Gara, so maybe they've talked a bit about that, if anything, maybe consulted whether or not that was going to be a good idea. So the first match is going to be Warrior versus Druid. Trump playing his Warrior, and Hyped is going to be playing Druid. A fast Druid um, is said to have an edge, but it's not a massive one. Less so when the Warrior is built to perhaps handle this a bit better. Yeah, just really unfortunate for Trump. Um, just getting pretty much the worst matchup that he could get at this moment. Um, Pretty much like any other combination of decks would have been better for Trump. So Hype definitely winning the mind games, at least in game one. Yeah, the interesting part is, what if it is OTK Warrior with double brawl? You know, <laughs> that like I don't know that Trump would play a deck like that, but we've seen it you know this week earlier. I, uh, I think, Strive Crow was playing it out, and that was pretty funny. I think Trump is a player who would like. He's the player that's least likely to play that kind of deck, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I guess if it's consistent, he might consider it, but it is a deck that suffers from um, being very reliant on specific cards. I don't even remember Trump playing Miracle Rogue. He to has be played it uh, in tournaments before, okay. but it's not a deck that he likes to play. Like, I would say his signature decks are actually the, uh, the Warrior and Paladin. Unfortunately, Definitely. Paladin is not that great right now so yeah he's just playing warrior a lot in a lot of tournaments he really prefers decks that are really slow that are really control heavy and he like he is the mayor of value town after all so he's gonna go for the value every single time yeah and the interesting thing i guess is that the the upside of paladin and warrior is that they have many lines of play you can take and headlock as well right that's another deck that he likes a lot you have many lines of play that you can take because the options are readily available whereas something like miracle rogue or otk warrior you're playing your deck that you don't even have in hand yet you're playing for cards that you're going to be drawing down the line very frequently and that is not something that lends itself necessarily to a play style uh, like it like trumps so i could see why he doesn't really like those we're just uh, right about to head into the first match, but before we do that, again, we want to re uh, remind you about the the Kingwin for Charity event that's happening over this weekend. It's going to be Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, so the Black Rock Mountain, the third wing, has come out while we were casting, while we were playing our show match. So those cards are all going to be in there. There's going to be Dragon Consort. There's going to be... 
What other cards are even? There's gonna be what? Dragon Consort, but yeah, Twilight Whelp is gonna be in there. Red and Black Hand is gonna be in there. Yeah, there's gonna be Twilight Whelp. I know that much from. There's gonna be the Druid, the the big Druid card, the uh, Volcanic yes. Lumberer that comes out with minions that died, the Core Rager for Hunters, um, and the Dragon Egg. The Dragon Egg might be experimented with a little bit, but that's, that's I don't know. True. Maybe yeah. it's like, but a lot of players are saying that it's just the worst Nerubian egg, I guess. What if you play Dragon Egg, Nerubian Egg, uh, Imp Gang Boss, and Demon Wrath? It's possible. Yeah. But you're, but you're just like summoning a 2 1 at that point, to be honest. All right, so first, value. first game is about to begin. We're going to have yeah. Trump with Warrior hyped with Druid. And we're about to see their hands. We're seeing their hands right now. And uh, I would say this looks pretty good for Druid. Yeah, Drew is getting the Wild Growth, getting the Shade of Nax, and the Pilot of Shredder as early as they possibly can come out effectively. So Hyped has a pretty good hand. Tr what are the most important cards in this matchup for Trump? Is this Shield Slam as soon as possible, or...? I think uh, the single most important card is probably the Death Spite, which... The Death Spite that he's got, yeah. He does have that, but he's going to need a lot more than that. Uh, another good card is, like, the Piloted Shredder for Trump. Uh, if he plays like a uh, the pilot shredder in his deck, uh, druid. Uh, the, the problem with um, warrior versus druid a lot of times is they fail to. Uh, they're, they're not very good in the mid game, and they fail to if they don't draw a sledge belcher and uh, shielded or shield maiden on uh, curving out on turns five and six, then they're gonna have a hard time contesting the druid board. Um, and if P Trump runs piloted shredder and he can play it on turn four and curves out just as well as the druid, then that's gonna be an advantage to him. Yeah, well, he didn't keep the Death's Bite, which I have to say I find a little surprising, but he picks up, I mean, Hype picks up an Innervate here, which is going to make his future turns even better. He's considering, perhaps, getting the Shredder out now, while Growth turn 3, and then getting the Druid of the Claw on Curve, but we'll have to see. Do you, do you think playing the Shredder now is better, generally speaking? Um, I would do you have think to... Innervate or Ancient? I would have to play out the my next few turns. Um... I like wild growth here. The, the, the problem with innervating out of pilot shredder, it's it's kind of somewhat more all in if your opponent has like a fiery war axe. Yeah, like in this exact case. So that would be a bit of a problem because you're trading one for one, if not two for one, because you are in fact feeding the innervate into it. Yeah. So Trump's hand, uh, it's somewhat okay. Uh, Acolyte is another one of those key cards you want in the early stages of the game, and fiery war axe will deal with this piloted shredder perfectly it's kind of funny because like previously in druid versus warrior the fiery war axe didn't get any value because uh the druid didn't run any minions with three health like three this health was yeah. this was before zombie chow before um before pilot shredder where like the smallest card was pretty much like a yeti uh but right now because um uh, because pilot shredder exists fire war axe does get more value all right, Trump decides to shield slam the pilot shredder to keep his armor up and possibly get himself some fire war axe value down the line. Wants to see what comes out of it because if you war axe, then your shield slam is less likely to work since your armor will be low. So using it now is a safe bet. Yeah, I don't think it's a play many people would have made, but it's certainly a very interesting one. Like if you go, uh, fire war axe against a four three, that's like something you generally like just do off the top of your head, right? Like yeah. if you have that against a three health creature yeah why not but this works as well and uh trump actually curves out slightly better getting to fit in more um more armor ups into his place and they're so important as well because once the combo hits you want to be as high as possible health wise and this is generally the biggest problem that warriors run into is they get beat down slowly but surely during the game taking five here using weapons as removal and then they just take one big burst of damage and the game's over yeah to be honest that was actually probably one of the best starts Hyped could have hoped for. Um, yeah. Outside of a shade, pretty much wild growth into getting a really quick Ancient of Lore is just so awesome. Um, I would say like the key cards in the deck for, uh, for Druid versus Warrior are the wild growth and the Ancient of Lore, and of course the Innervates. And Hyped got all three of those cards, which is just amazing. There's yeah. so much tempo um, that there's like so much tempo Hyped is gained right now, and then he'll pretty much always have the initiative until a brawl. And even after that, the Brawl takes up 5 mana, and Druid will be able to take initiative once again. Yeah, that's the biggest deal, is getting the initiative is one of the biggest things you want to do as Druid. Not let... you don't want to give your opponent a turn where you're not punching the face and removing some armor, at least. So, that's exactly what you want to do, and he's in a position to do that pretty effectively. Better yet, he even has the ability to, you know, Wrath for Draw if he wants to, or Wrath for 3, and then keep it the Grove, or even a bigger board presence. 
which will put Trump on the back foot even further. Yeah, I, I really like this play from Hyped because Hyped has a lot of cards that are like, they do damage, but he doesn't have that many solid minions in his hand. It's pretty much true to the claw. So you kind of want to balance his, uh, his hand slightly, getting rid of the cards that do damage. So now he has like two cards that are kind of that do damage and they're situational, and one card is a solid minion. Yeah, and Trump was Trump wants to either establish board presence with Sylvanas, but that's that doesn't feel good at all because the, the first one was played. Um, he would get the edge on it, but he's dead to Savage Roy if he does that. So he can't really risk playing Sylvanas. But if he brawls, the value he's gonna get is very minimal. He's gonna remove two minions, which is pretty okay. But one of them is gonna stay up and deal five further damage. So that's gonna bring him down to at least fifteen, and that is not something you feel comfortable doing. Yeah, Trump could be planning like a Sylvanas into Brawl next turn. But again, like you said, it's vulnerable to Savage Roar. And it's also vulnerable to the second Keeper of the Grove in Hype's hands. Trump doesn't know that. He assumes that because he's uh, because Hyped has played one Keeper, then he probably doesn't have a second one. But he's going to be sorely mistaken. Yeah, that's going to be a bit, uh, a bit of a problem. And Hyped is probably just going to go face at this point, to be honest. It feels like... With plays like these, you've got Druid of the Claw, you can charge up for four more. You've got a total of 16 on board. Can you really afford not picking it up when you've got a turn nine swipe Druid of the Claw number two? So, if Hyped actually goes for this play, let's see how much damage that's... Uh, he puts Trump down to... Okay, to eight. So, if Trump brawls... Uh, obviously, like, uh, Hyped is going to charge here. So, if Trump brawls... the best case scenario is he gets like a Sylvanas or he steals a Sylvanas right and then he has one more uh he can still armor up but that's yeah, still but he'd he's still dead. be dead yeah exactly so ultimately I think Hype picked up the you know after a second Druid of the Claw came up I think you can't afford not just going full face uh I think it's too strong not to do because seeing Sengar the Druid of the Claw when you have a swipe in hand guarantees you're gonna get nine damage and he gets the four forward charge though is that impactful at all? Actually, this might just be what he needs. We have a shield shield block that's going to put him out of range of the immediate lethal. He needs to find a shield slam off of it, though. Yeah, if he gets shield block into armor and to shield slam, he can actually survive in the next turn. Wow, that would be insane. Th that's such a small chance. What about even Whirlwind would work, yeah, right? Yeah, Whirlwind would be excellent. Oh, no! Oh, no way. There is yeah. no way. You know, that is what uh, we call in the industry a huge draw. A huge draw! Oh my goodness, Trump picks up exactly the cards that he needed. And Hyped is nodding. Wait, 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 wait! No, no! no. Oh! Trump, what are you doing? He's no. still alive, though. No, he's not- Oh no, my god. Alive. Mistake! Jaraxxus would say that. Oh well, Hyped is gonna pick up the game because Trump didn't armor up and decided to play the greedy, greedy Acolyte of Pain. But I guess he was already playing around combo, so ultimately, it w like in his mind, it didn't matter much, right? Yeah, it's well, just that that's like, one more win condition that you put yourself is, into. The thing is, it didn't play around... Um, it didn't play around Drew the Claw into Swipe or Drew the Claw into Savage Roar, so... Oh man, Trump looking a little confused here. Yeah, a there's no combo? What happened here? I, I felt like if he it was able to stabilize, then he would actually be in a pretty good position. But I kind of see Trump's perspective as well. Um, like, the Druid can just keep putting on minions and Trump will be pressured every single turn. And eventually the Druid will draw Force of Nature Savage or if he hasn't already. So Trump is saying, like, I need to draw more cards so... I, I can, can find Alex, right? Yeah, I, oh, I can find Alex, I can find the shield maidens, the second shield block, just so, like, eventually I'll be able to steal, stabilize, have more of a chance of stabilizing, and yeah. uh, just survive the combo in a future turn. Yeah, that's a debatable line of play that he took, but we had the information, and to be honest, when you don't know that your opponent's not holding Force of Nature, Savage Roy, and possibly, you know, a swipe, if you're not dead now, you're projecting yourself being dead in two turns, unless you draw exactly what you need, which is what he attempted to do by putting down the Acolyte, but uh, despite the shield slam, I mean, he was he would have been too off lethal in effect if he had played um, the armor up instead of the acolyte. But then no card draw comes up, so how good of a position would he have been in at that point? Yeah, all very true. So unfortunately for Trump, he uh, he he he, uh, he still has the warrior, but that's actually might be a good thing because he does kind of need that warrior to defeat a rogue if yeah. his hunter can't defeat it. So. Um, 
it's it's bad for Trump. He's down one game, but it's not as bad because the Warriors still has pretty good matchup against the rest of the field. Yeah, in a uh, in a last year with standing, this would be a pretty you know a pretty problematic situation whereby he'd be able to play hyped to be able to replay Drew, but in conquest, Trump is basically waiting for the rogue to show up, and uh, hyped is going to be going for his mage next as opposed to you know his rogue, and Trump is going to pick warrior, so we're going to see a mage versus warrior. This is freeze mage at all. Trump is taking this one pretty much all day. I don't think there's, to be honest, I don't think there's any way this is going to be Freeze Mage. Hyped actually, uh, he alternates between Freeze Mage and uh, Value? Mech Mage, uh, no. Mech Mage in his games, but he knows Trump prefers Warrior. He knows Trump will probably bring Warrior to this uh, to this match, so so it doesn't really make any sense for him to bring Freeze Mage. I feel. Yeah, I know Hyped is a very good Freeze Mage player, but this is obviously not the the match you want to be playing. You don't want to be playing up against Trump with a Freeze Mage deck. Yeah, we're just about to get into the game. Uh, Mage from Hyped and Warrior from Trump. And we do, in see, we do indeed see that it's going to be Mech Mage. I'll fix you! I don't know if uh, Trump's going to get fixed, but... Hyped does have the cards. Now, the most important cards for Hyped, in effect, like, he needs to get that early board presence that sticks around, but... Getting the Archmage later on is crucial in this matchup. If the Warrior can actually weather down the aggression that you're putting on early, then you're in a really, really bad spot. Yeah. So... Okay, so... One thing I have to note about uh, Hype's deck... I'm actually very familiar with Hype's particular Mech Mage because I've just casted a lot of games from him. The, there's three cards in his deck that are really interesting. <laughs> Map deck doesn't have. He runs the Harvest Golems instead of Spider Tanks, and he just adds in one Blinktron. And you can see, like, pretty much he has both those cards in his hand right now. They're yeah. very interesting tech choices, and I have to feel like it's because uh, he's on Tempo Store, because he has influence from Reyna that he runs. Yeah, I mean, Blinktron is essentially Tempo Storm's Mech Mage uh, tech at this point, right? That's pretty much the most played. The most teched in card from them. That's the one I. That's the place I've seen it most. Yeah, exactly. Um, he's uh, Raynad is actually the father of the father of, of everything. Of Blinktron. <laughs> yeah, of everything, including Blinktron. Yep. All right, so the Cogmaster will fall down. There's gonna be one armor given here to Trump two over the course of the entire armorsmith's life so it's not really that bad it basically traded it's basically a better armor up in this position you just get two armor plus the ability to trade away into a minion yeah i think hypes will give his opponent a few uh some more, more armor, armor yeah. but i don't think it matters too much just uh like the health in this matchup isn't really as valuable as the uh the board positions we can see this is one of the, those positions where the harvest golem is slightly better than the spider tank because the spider, like, now the Harvest Golem, like, it essentially has more lives. If this were a spider tank, it would be a 2 or a 3 2 um, at this point. But right now it's a 2 1 with a death rattle that summons a 2 1, and that's slightly yeah. better. That's two lines of, uh, of aggression that Trump has to go through. But he does find a brawl, though, for later. So that's going to be a very important card against Mech Mage. Obviously, if Hype locks down the board with Lothab, that's going to have to be delayed, but it's really an important one. Yeah, we do see, as I was uh, talking before in the last match, Trump does run one pilot shredder, and it's just going to help him curve out slightly better. Yeah. So, do you trade into that shredder with the mad scientist to get yourself the mirror entity right now? Because that way, if Sludge Belcher falls down, you're protected. I, it's such a good trade that I would be... Uh... I, I'd be hesitant not to do it. Yeah. That's how good it feels. Oh, yeah. So the other play is uh, you sacrifice your mad scientist because you want the mirror image on. Onto the board. Yeah, I think that's what you want. The mirror entity is too good not to take in this position. And the oh, four hits go to the face. Are you kidding me? Yeah, exactly. And now there's no mech. If the 3-2 trades into the 4-1... Then there's only two damage left to wipe the minion, but if the 2-1 trades, the Cogmaster becomes a 1-2, and there is no mech. It's a 1-1 one, one that comes out. That is as good as it's going to get for Hyped. Okay, so Hyped got a little unlucky with the Blast Mage shots, but he got very lucky with the uh, with, with the Pilot of Treasure, so it kind of balances out. 
Unfortunately, yeah. if you balance out the death spike, just gets so much value, and I think Trump is in a fairly good position at this point. Um, Do you just blink Tron it out? <laughs> yeah, I think that's nah, actually the play. Is it? Because you could play Paladin Shredder and Harvest Golem. The, the death rattles triggers after the death bite, so what they spawn would live. But you override the death spite, isn't that really nice? I guess it is, unless you give them another death bite. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. And then it's a disaster. Like the Paladin Shredder just feels like less pressure. Then blink I, I guess you put less face damage because the mirror entity is a crucial consideration here. By having it on the board, it's safety against any kind of swing back that Trump might want to make. He's going to have to wait for a proper card to feed into it. But if there's a weapon equipped on hype side, it's really going to be difficult for Trump to pick what he wants to feed into it. He has to, he might be on a clock by the weapon that hype gets. Yeah. I really want to see the blink -tron here. Like, isn't the point of blink -tron just to overwrite your opponent's weapons in this matchup? A lot of the time it is, yeah. There we go. What is it going to be? We see a life's justice for Trump and a perdition's blade for hype. That is not what Trump wanted to see, I don't think. Oh, wow. I, I am I mean, sorry. Oh, that's a pretty good draw. Execute. Pretty sweet. Yep. Uh, the the life's justice actually isn't that bad. He can still pop some divine shields and uh, kill off some clockwork domes, I guess. Yeah, against the Noyotrons. It can be useful. I mean, it's not a dead card by any means, but it's no death bite in general. Well, Hyped has to go through 25 more health, but his pressure is possible. Like, he's got a lot of pressure coming up. Oh, wow. He picks up a Tinkertown Technician to go with the Harvest Golem. Yeah, fairly easy turn. Just play out your curve. And uh, Hyped could actually just consider hitting the face at this point because he might be scared of something like Harrison Jones. What, the only thing I do like about not attacking face is that you can kill off the slime of a sludge belcher with the remaining two attack, if that's relevant down the line. Yeah, that's true. Just weigh the right. options, and I, I definitely agree with you. I feel like attacking that slime, or the possibility of a slime, is uh, more likely than the possibility of Harrison Jones, because Warrior runs two sludge belchers and one Harrison Jones, right? Typically, yeah. So now Trump has to make the decision of... You know, he actually, you know what's interesting is that he can actually use Execute with the Life Justice. Just ping for one, then execute something, if that comes to be necessary. That's true. I don't, I don't think he wants to take that extra four damage. Damage, though. though, yeah. And if you do that, the problem is you peel off your own armor, so you won't be able to activate the Shield Slam on the next turn. Uh, on the next turn. So I actually think Trump will go for the Shield Slam here. And not Dr. Boom. Oh, well, I mean, it is turn seven. <laughs> it is turn seven, yeah. That's the consideration he's got to be making, which is, do I want to play Dr. Boom into Mirror Entity? And the answer is, I don't think so. I don't think you want to give your opponent uh, pretty much like a fireball to the face, right? Yeah, it, the thing is, if he had eight mana, he'd be able to handle it by playing Shield Slam onto it, but he doesn't. What well, a conundrum. That's, that's certainly a, a disappointing turn if I ever saw one. Yeah, you, you used up pretty much four. three mana on that turn when you had seven to work with. And Dr. Boom on seven. Yeah. Oh, wow. Archmage Antoninus with the finicky cloak field. Hype has got to be happy about that one. I mean, that is the combo that you need to win the game. And I think Hype is in a pretty dominating position at this point. Yeah. Again, nothing that Trump can play. That mirror entity is just so key. So, and it's very nice from Hyped just to suicide in his uh, Mad Scientist on the turn before. Oh man, was Trump going to play Grom into this? Because this is essentially allowing the mage to ping it off. I don't think that's an option. So you could execute Lothab if you attack into it, right? Uh, yes, that is true. He's, uh, he's going to opt to set up a Brawl for next turn. I wonder if Hyped is going to read that. It'd be pretty, uh, pretty amazing if he got something like Armor Smith into Brawl too. But I don't think like this doesn't play around Brawl. But honestly, like it's just too good to pass up at this point. Yeah, you get a free fireball. At the very least, you get one. There's a chance your Archmage survives through Brawl, so it's not that horrible, honestly. The six damage you've got in hand is really meaningful. Well, let's see what Trump picks up. He finds a Sludge Belcher. Oh, a little off curve for that Brawl. If the 2-1 lives, Trump may yet be okay. Oh! 
goodness. No, killing off Archmage Antonidas is always very good, and Trump might be back into it, but the thing is, like, you always have to consider the mirror entity that's uh, on the still on the field. Yeah, if that, that mirror is entity clogging up, the game. Yeah, exactly. If that mirror entity weren't up, then Trump would actually be in a pretty good position at this moment. Unfortunately. All right, so Snowchecker comes down saying, "Yeah, I probably won't allow you to play uh, into weapons. any weapons." All right, so Trump has to feed a sludge belcher into this. Oh, hello, Gorhal. You will yeah, not I, be missed. Unfortunately for Trump, I think at this point. Oh, so Trump is actually... He's still thinking of gore howling, which is interesting. Yeah, I think, uh... Like, he's, he, he realizes that he pretty much has to feed an armor smith or, like, a cruel taskmaster uh, into his opponent's board at this point. The problem with the gore howl is that no matter what you attack, you're gonna get a frozen next turn. So it's essentially like you're using seven mana for a removal that deals so you, damage to your you, face. You pop the shredder, or do you kill a snow chugger? All right, he goes ahead and kills the snow chugger. Can't really blame him, but he yeah. knows there's a fireball in his opponent's hand. So there's twelve. There's twelve, thirteen, fourteen. He's one off lethal, actually, right? One damage I, off it. Yeah, one damage off lethal. Nothing that he can do here to actually get lethal. Um, you can't really ping your Clockwork Dome to, yeah, but to get like any spare part that does two damage. Thing is, can Trump actually do anything? Okay, Shield block's that, a good card. That's a very good card. If he gets an armor smith here, maybe. No. Alex may come in handy. I think you have to drop that Belcher no matter what, right? Yeah, you know there's a uh, fireball in your opponent's hand, so do you have anything to lose? Nothing. All right. How much is that? Is there a guaranteed lethal? Well, now there might be. There certainly is at this point. Especially because, like you said, he kept the Perdition's Blade to clear off any slimes from the Sludge Belcher, right? Yep. So... Frostbolt, okay. attack, trade with Clockwork, full phase fireball. Yeah, that's lethal. Well, Hyped is going to be getting himself the win here. Despite the amazing brawl from Trump, that wasn't enough. That mirror entity was way too much, right? He's gonna be exact lethal, in fact. That's what I find really amazing about this. Is that Perdition's Blade being kept might have been what mattered most. Because there might have been a bit of an overkill here. Well, even in Actually, it wouldn't have mattered in this case. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah, Reversing Switch would add even two more damage. Yeah. Do you go for the Reversing Switch BM? I think so. When do you not? Uh, Trump is too nice of a guy. Hyped is too nice. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. No well, problem. <laughs> At least it was I wasn't like casting a Masan, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I always make that mistake. Whenever whenever cause whenever I, I look at the, the roster, I'll be casting, you know, three different players on the same day. So I'll say Strife Pro and then it's gonna be Trump, but then I end up mixing the names for whatever reason. Um, I I mix up the names all the time, but those always strike out as um, the most racist one, so racist Nox is confirmed. <laughs> so Hyped is up 2-0 actually against Trump right now. Druid won and his mage won, which leaves only the rogue, but if Trump's lineup is heavily anti-rogue, that could be problematic. Yeah, yet again, even though Trump is down 0-2, uh, I still think Trump has a very good chance going to the next few matches. As I've said before, Trump does like to target Rogue from his opponent, and uh, we actually see it's going to be Warrior. Trump sticking with his Warrior against Hype's Rogue for the next uh, game, so that should be very favorable for Warrior. Kind of yeah. like pretty much like 70, 30, or 80, 20, like maybe even more than that, to be honest. Yeah, the Rogue needs to find very, very strong starts, and I think Tempo Rogue is actually a bit better than just a pure Tinker's Sharp Sword, and we've seen a lot of uh, Hype playing that deck a lot. I mean, Just Saying was telling me that he built that deck. Or at least worked on it quite a bit, and uh, Hype has been running it with Dr. Boom, Ragnaros, and the bigger minions, you know, Lotheb. Just about the, the biggest threats you can pack in something like Tinker's Sharp Sword to make your matchup against Control even better. Yeah, um, it just, uh, if you put in those cards and you take out the oils, it just uh, makes your bad matchup slightly less bad. Um, yeah. Because, like, with the oils, you're not really going to burst down Warrior, and you're not really going to, uh, it, it doesn't really help you against the class, like, Face hunter, right? Unless you yeah, do burst them down. If you draw the two oils in your opening hand, you're going to be really sad. Whereas you could be playing cards like Doctor Boom and uh, Ragnaros, uh, Emperor Thorazin, or Sludge Belcher, and all those cards are going to be much better against uh, against Trump. Trump, I mean, do yeah. You see, 
yeah, we're gonna go to the game right now, and um, we do see in the opening hands from the players, there's gonna be. I don't think bias. the gameplay is showing yet, but the uh, no. because there's a little bit of a glitch for the top player. So in a nutshell, um, I think if Trump's lineup, and I want to recap, like he's got Hunter, Mage, and Warrior, Face Hunter, Warrior, and I guess a, a type of value mage could be pretty good against Rogue if he's running those. I would say like most uh, most value mages or tempo mages aren't really good against Rogue, so I suspect maybe it's... I would probably guess if I were a betting man, probably like a mech mage. A but betting he man. Could also, he could also be playing a freeze mage because that's also, um, also a deck that's pretty good against, uh, 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 against Rogue. Yeah, I, I think it's even better against the tempo version than it is against oil because oil tends to burst you down whereas tempo plays minions that you can answer as mage. So we'll have to see how that goes. But that Defy Swing Leader leads me to believe this may be the same version that we've seen hype run quite frequently. Whoa, two oh, Defy Swing Leaders? Whoa. Wait, have you ever seen that? I know hype no. really likes Defy Swing Leaders. He, he usually replaces the South Sea Deckhand for Defy Swing Leaders in his rogue deck, but I've never seen two Defy Swing Leaders in a deck. Uh, Could this, this be Aggro Rogue? Are we, I mean, maybe Hyped built a time machine and traveled back to 2013. <laughs> back when that was all the hype. Oh, it is Aggro Rogue. Wolf Rider has just shown up here. Ready to ride. And Trump is going to be wondering what the hell is going on, but he's got a semi-decent hand to handle this, I'd say. Yeah, like, so Sludge Belcher and Shield Maiden are just amazing. So this is like more like Backspace Rogue or Turn 7 Rogue from the Chinese scene, right? Yeah, and Hyped might be running Gang Ups in Agro Rogue. That could be interesting. Wait, does that make sense? Because you probably don't want to put more stuff in your deck, right? Depending on what it is. But yeah, I mean, I just I just feel like Hyped bringing back Agro Rogue from the graveyard that, it be, that it's been stuck in is a complete surprise to me. And with, by not playing Wolf Rider, he's not even telling his opponent what he might be playing. Trump will see the second device and have some doubts, though. Yeah, I think that's going to set off some uh, set off some alarms for Trump. Like, why do you have two Defy's ringleaders in your deck? Oh, man. Trump's going to go for the Death Bite. Yeah, that's going to be, be quite a bit one. more damage. Yeah, it's going to be a good one when it does get overridden or, you know, popped, but... For the time being, he is taking quite a lot of damage. To say the very least, I mean, look at this. Oh, this is going to be an unfortunate turn for Hyped. He can't really do anything. If he just puts up a Wolf Rider, that's going to be cleared immediately by the Death Spite. And Trump actually has a really good hand for dealing with this, uh, both dealing with this board and stabilizing. He has the Sludge Belcher for next turn, he has the Shield Maiden to follow that up. And behind that, he has a lot of card draw and he has a weapon in the Fire War Axe and a second Death Spite even. Uh, Hyped could still get it done if he finds a good Sap. I guess Sap would do a lot of work for him in the next few turns, but he's gonna have to get it as soon as possible. Killing the Belcher shouldn't be an issue. Oh, goodness. That South Sea Deckhand. So what kind of combos are available here? Backstab SI trade into the 3-5 with your dagger. And then maybe clear the slime with South Sea, but that's... I mean, you, you at that point you're keeping Tinkers for the Wolf Rider. That's what it means. That's why I, uh, I don't understand from that. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah, I like that line of play actually. It's much better than what I highlight. This is like... 20 times better, in fact. Yeah, so he's able to clear the sludge and put a threat on the board. And yeah. Trump is Trump is in a bit of trouble right now. He's at a very low health, and the only way to clear is by equipping uh, something like uh, one of his weapons, probably the Death Spite, and taking even more damage to face. Yeah. Do you equip Death Spite, attack the 3-3, three, three, then override it with the Fire War Axe? Oh, uh, that's, that's interesting, but... Um, I mean, you might so as well armor up, right? Yes, um, you might as well. It gives you more, the same amount of health, except for when take your sharp sword all is uh, is a possibility. Yeah, and hyped has the wolf rider anyway to enable the tinkers, so that's not going to be a problem for him. And I think that might just be game. Yeah, yeah I think that, that is that is game. Exact lethal here, I believe, for hyped. That is a three zero from hyped over Trump. What a! This is just a blowout. This rogue deck coming out of nowhere, surprising Trump, and I think Hive's gonna feel pretty good, pretty good about that uh, that game here. 
Yeah, um, as we were saying before, before the games even happen, Tr Hyped is a predictable player in the classes that he plays, but yeah. he's not always a predictable player in the types of Rogue or Mage or Druid decks he plays. He has a lot of variety within those classes, and now I see that's... Uh, now, now I see how Hyped is just winning all these games in the Kingwin Pro League, all these matches, with just playing three classes, essentially. Yeah, because the, the fun thing is, his Druid is very predictable, I would say, very, generally speaking. That's his go-to, you-know-what-I-play deck. And then his Mage and Rogue tend to vary quite a bit. He's played all sorts of Rogue variants, especially since GVG added so many opportunities to tweak it, right? It's so easy to tweak a Rogue deck to make it do what you want it to. Um, and now with this Aggro Rogue that he brought, I mean, between Mill Rogue, Aggro Rogue, the Tinker Sharp Sword, the more tempo-oriented Tinkers, and the uh, some of the faster decks that you can see sometimes, I think Rogue has a really good diversity, and Hyped is abusing that to you know great extent in the KPL. Yeah, like a lot of diversity, a lot of like they have a lot of tools, and you can't fit everything in. But with those tools, they can gear their decks towards more uh, minion-based Rogue, more oil-based Rogue, or even as we saw from the last game, just standard aggro Rogue. I guess. Yeah, so we're going to be taking a 15 minutes break. After that, we're going to be casting two more matches. We have two more matches today from Brian, Brian Kibler, Kibler from Brian Kibler Gaming versus Frezar and then versus Thais. So those should be two interesting matches. We don't see much of Brian Kibler. Um, right, we have three matches. Sorry, Kalento versus Ama is going to be coming up after that um, since we postponed it as the second match of the day. So we'll be going on 15 minutes break and then we'll just be back, I guess. <laughs> 